All right, I think this is super important and I want to listen to this with you all together. Let me explain it. The music industry have been trying to get pitch correction as an industry standard for 20 years. Why? Because it means that their singers, who might not be very accurate pitch-wise, can use pitch correction and great singers who would far outshine some of their yep. artists, if they're using pitch correction as well, it's now a level playing field. The great singers who have all of the emotion, all of the expression, are now going through pitch correction, and now yep. they're the same as the vocalists who don't have the expression and the emotion. They're all at the same level. So for the recording industry, for the music industry as a whole, that's the perfect game plan. It's the perfect yeah. business model. If you can make a singer who isn't as talented sound the same as a singer who's massively more talented, that's that's the ultimate. OK, got that. Makes sense. This is why I'm bringing this up more and more on the channel. When I first started reacting not too long ago, I'm only five months in, I was a little insecure about talking about how much vocal effects processing I'm hearing on these vocals. Like, in other words, how much people are, after they've recorded their vocals, manipulating it with pitch correcting software, tone quality changing software, this is why it's so important. It's because this is like big business stuff. This is like controlling the music business, like taking great singers, auto-tuning them, taking not so great singers, auto-tuning and pitch correcting and getting them all in the same playing field so that the business can control who gets the front stage based on whatever the trends are. It's just an easy sort of solution. And if the populace, if you all can't hear it, what's it matter? And this is why I'm going to talk about it more on the channel when I hear it. This is why I'm going to demonstrate with software when I hear it. The same way that Phil does, I have some of the similar softwares that he has when he's breaking down if someone is doing the pitch correcting stuff or not. So I'm going to start working that in here and there into my video so that I can talk about it because this channel is for entertainment, but it's also for education. And I believe it's very important moving into the future that we celebrate real, live, raw vocals and we celebrate artists who can do it live. Like Billie Eilish, for instance, if you go to Phil's channel, there's a video where he's breaking down how Billie Eilish straight up, she does live what she does on her recordings. And that's amazing. And there are lots of artists who are very big in the scene who can't do that, who don't do that. So that's what I want to celebrate. That's what this channel is about. It's about celebrating. I'm a vocal instructor. I've been teaching people how to build singing technique for the last 24 years. And admittedly, I have used the pitch correcting software in the past. I've used it on my own vocals. I've used it on my student vocals. Right when it all came out, I was very excited about it. Like, oh my God, I can do all this stuff. But where my mind always went was, uh-oh, what's going to happen when my student or, my, or I need to sing the song live? I better get it together so that I can sing it live. So it's really interesting that that's the thing that's come up and it all comes full circle. We just can't lie to each other about this anymore. We have to honor it. We have to practice like they did back in the day and get our vocals to a level to where we take a mic, we turn on a little reverb, a little compression, the normal things that we put on a vocal, and then we sing it and we take that vocal, maybe do a little EQing and things, we set it into the mix and then leave it alone. We don't go in and manipulate the tone quality. We don't manipulate the pitch. We don't manipulate the vibrato. We don't do any of that stuff. You know, that's kind of like Photoshopping a photo equivalent in the audio world, basically. And now more than ever, it's important to define these lines for ourselves of where too far is because AI is making it possible to do crazy deep fakes, not just in visuals, but also in audio. So that's one of the big reasons why I'm a huge fan of Phil over at Wings of Pegasus. I highly recommend you head over and follow him. I enjoy watching his content. I think he's an honest guy with a lot of integrity and it's the same thing that I want to do with this channel. I just want to be honest and I want to celebrate real singing. All right, so there you have it. Definitely this topic's going to come up more on the channel. What are your thoughts on it? Do, are you able to hear when there's vocal effects processing put on the vocals? You know, like the show Glee. That show is one that in the 
Zeitgeist has been talked about as a show that does have a lot of pitch correcting, so much so that people can hear it. Can you hear it when you listen to Glee? I'm going to start doing some demonstrations as well, showing pitch correcting, not pitch correcting, so that you all can learn how to hear it in the same way that I can after having manipulated and messed with it for a while. So more to come with this. Thanks for stopping by. If you like this video, click subscribe. And also, like I said, go over and check out Phil over at Wings of Pegasus. He's super awesome. Cheers.